So once again, we're going to do a few more demonstrations here of uh, the trim functionality of the aircraft. So I should point out, at the moment, what we're currently flying is a Cessna 172 in X-Plane 10, um, but there's absolutely no plugins running in the background. There's no special software running on the computer side. Um, basically, all we've done is we've taken this device, plopped it down, plugged it in at this point via the USB interface, and configured uh, pitch and roll configurations in X-Plane using the standard uh, joystick configuration menu. That's absolutely it. We haven't done anything else. I haven't set up trim functionality with X-Plane. Basically all the trim switch does is it tells a microcontroller where that neutral resting position should be on the yoke. I'm applying pressure with my hand right now to keep the aircraft in this attitude. If I release my hand, the nose drops. And this is standard that you're going to find on any aircraft. So um, as you change the aircraft's attitude, the controls are naturally going to want to come back to a natural, natural resting position. So what we do in the real aircraft in order to uh, prevent you from having to continuously hold pressure is we set the attitude that we want and then as we're applying pressure with our fingers we adjust the trim settings until we're no longer feeling any pressure. We can take our hands off and now at this point the aircraft is properly trimmed. So let's try that again with a descent. I'm going to push the nose down into a descent attitude. Here you can see that the horizon line has changed its orientation again. If I were to release my hand, you see how the nose pumps back up. So we apply downward pressure with our fingers, and we now eliminate that pressure using trim. And the aircraft is now in a nice stable descent. Okay, we're going to do that same to the right. We're going to go straight to a 60 degree bank. I'm going to go part way through the, uh, part way through the turn and then I'm going to release the controls so you guys can see what's actually happening here. Okay, here we are, set up again. A little, little high. Air speed's a little slow, but that's not a problem. We're in a simulator. So here we go. Let's go right to the stop. Roll, 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 there we are, and pull. All right, part way through. I'm going to let go of the controls now and see what happens when I let go. So I'm going to bring the controls back again, see if we can recover. Lost a heck of a lot of altitude there. Let's bring it back up. So this is a demonstration of autopilot functionality with the yoke. Once again, we're using X-Plane 10. At this point, we are using data ref information via USB to be able to extract the appropriate autopilot data. We're on runway 27 at the Victoria International Airport in the default Cirrus jet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off by hand, and after about 500 feet, I'm going to engage the autopilot and show its functionality. I should note, I don't have any rudder pedals attached, so please uh, excuse the crookedness of the takeoff. Passing through 120 knots, and we'll get us airborne. Gears are coming up. Nice gentle climb. Passing through 500 feet, I'm going to engage heading mode for autopilot. Slight turn to the right, and we're going to set our vertical speed to about 2,000. And I'm going to throttle back a bit. Pitching the nose down. I'm going to reduce power.
power again. Check where we're at. Oh, it's 60% power. And let's perform a turn to the right. And obviously we can disconnect the autopilot at any time, either by pressing the autopilot disconnect button or by applying motion to the controls.